Hello, art people. Today we are working on our last day of painting this um, moonlight painting here. And I just want to remind you that this is also a science lesson. So you will be able to make a little light for your artwork once this last day is completed. You'll get a battery and a little light bulb and you'll get to make it light up. So for this day, we're going to be doing our final layers of our paint and we're going to be adding details. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let's paint our little cats. So you can do brown cats, gray cats, pink cats, whatever you want. This, when it's black, this is the most traditional type of silhouette, is a black silhouette, but you don't have to do a black silhouette if you don't want. For instance, I'm going to do a gray silhouette for mine. So if you want to do gray, go ahead and squirt some white, just about a half dollar amount or so, like that. You could also just do a white cat. And then you'll also need some black if you're doing a gray cat. So you get out whatever color you want to make your cat. And remember, you're only allowed to mix two colors at a time. So get out either one or two colors. I'll give you time to do that. You should be squeezing paint on your palette right now. Okay. Very good. And you're not squeezing a lot, so you should be done by now. Okay? You're going to want to use one of the smaller brushes for your cat. So go ahead and get a small brush. And now you can mix two of your colors that you've picked out if you want. Or you can just pick one of the colors. But if you picked out two colors to mix, you can go ahead and mix it. So for gray, it's black and white. But if you wanted to do a light brown, so you got brown and white, or dark brown, so you got brown and black, that's fine. Any color plus white is called a tint, T-I-N-T. -T. Any color plus black is called a shade. And the darkness and lightness of colors are called values. So this is like a medium value that I'm making. So, you should have that color mixed up by now. And now you can begin painting your cat. I've done two cats in this one, or whatever your animal is, because I did tell you that you could do a different animal besides a cat. Go ahead and begin painting those. Good job. Like I said, I happen to have two on mine because that was an option. Okay. I'm done painting my cat, so I'm going to put my paintbrush in my water. That's where it hangs out during art class. At the end of art class, we clean it and put it in the blue cup, but it's hanging out in the water for now because class, class is not over yet. All right. You should be done painting your cat by now. So now what we're going to do is some details on our roof. So you can do U's like this. You can do smileys like this. I'm going to do something a little different this time. You don't have to use black like I've used, but I am going to use black which I already have on my palette. If you do not have black on your palette or whatever color you want to do your details with, I'll give you some time to go ahead and get your paint and pour a little bit, just about the size of a half dollar. It should fit into one of the small rectangles of paint. Okay. All right. You should have your accent color now ready to go. Grab a small, another small brush. Unless you're doing stripes or big stripes, I guess you don't have to use a small brush. I'm using a small brush because I'm doing small details. Get some of that color on your paintbrush and go ahead and get started. I am going to be doing more of diamonds this time. So to make diamonds, you just do some diagonal lines. So diagonal lines are lines that are leaning. 
and you notice how I'm not going off the page. I'm not getting any paint on my table. If you get really close to the edge, you just lift your paper up, and then you can go right off the edge as long as it's in the air that it doesn't get on the table. So diagonal lines are laid down, or are at a diagonal. At a, uh, they're slanted. They're leaning. Horizontal lines are going, are laying down. They go from left to right. And vertical lines go up and down. They're standing up. So to do my diamond pattern, I'm going to do these diagonal lines here. And then I'm going to go the other direction with my diagonal lines. And again, you don't have to do diamonds. You can do something else. Whatever you want for the details of your roof, the texture of your roof. Okay, is and line is one of our elements of art. The elements of art are just the ingredients that we use to make our artwork. So lines, shapes, color, space, value, and texture. Those are the things we put together to make art. Okay. You should be done with the line work by now for your roof. I'll give you a little bit extra time though. I'm just going to put my paintbrush in my water because that's where it hangs out during art class. At the end of the art class, we clean out and put it in the cup. Okay. And now we're going to do some details on our tree. So if you're doing um, a like Christmas landscape, you could do Christmas ornaments on your tree. If you're doing winter time, you could put some snow on your naked tree. I am just going to make mine just a bushy tree. So I am going to be getting some light green. So if you need to make light green, if you don't have light green at your table, you can mix green and white. I do have light green though. So get your color that you're going to do details with. And pour yourself about a half dollar worth or about one square full. So go ahead and pour yourself some paint for your details. Unless you're going to be using one of the colors you already have out, then you can skip that. And then again, we're using our smaller brushes. So pretty much at the end of paintings, you only use small brushes for the most part. It's at the beginning of the painting that we use our big brushes. Not that you're not allowed to use a big brush right now, but that's just usually how painting works, is we do the big stuff, the, the big stuff dry, and then do the small stuff. So anyway, I've got this, and I am just going to do these kind of like curves here to give that texture of like a tree. You don't have to do this if you don't want. You could put a bird in your tree. Um, if you have the trunk of your tree showing, you could do a little circle in the trunk of the tree and have like a little owl in the trunk of the tree or something if you wanted. I might, if you're doing a Valentine's Day project, you could also do heart, like, Chris, like heart Christmas ornaments. Some people do have Valentine's Day trees where they decorate for Valentine's Day. I'm just going to add these. Just kind of give it a little bit of a texture. And you know what? I'm going to add another value of green. The value is a lightness or darkness. So right now I have two values of green. I have a dark green and a light green. I'm going to do, and we are allowed to mix two colors at a time. So I'm allowed to put my paintbrush in the water, pour myself some green, and I'm allowed to mix these two colors in a separate area. So I'm going to mix some light green and some dark green. And it's going to give me a medium value, a medium green. And I'm going to add some of that in there too. So you don't need to do that if you don't want. It's just an option. If you want to do three values in your tree, you can do that. So I'm just going to have some of those in there. And then I'm going to put my paintbrush in my water. So I'll give you some time to finish that. And then we're going to do details in the sky. So I 
um, was inspired by our artist for this lesson, which was Vincent Van Gogh and his painting Starry Night. So I did these brush strokes like this. They're moving in a linear way and they're showing movement. And it kind of looks like the sky is windy. So I did that like Vincent Van Gogh did that. So that's an option for you. In this one, I did snow. That's an option for you. You can also do stars as well. For this one, I'm going to do fireworks. Okay. So go ahead and decide what kind of details you want to do. And you can do something I didn't mention as well, maybe. And I'm going to be doing... Um, be doing some pink fireworks. So in order to make this pink, I'm going to be using red and white. So go ahead and pick out your color. Again, you can pick out two colors to mix if you want, or just one color. I already have white out, so I don't have to get my second color to make pink. So you don't need a whole lot. Go ahead and get your color for your sky details. Maybe you're just doing white because you're doing snow. Okay. And then you can mix those two colors together. I'm going to mix. To make pink, by the way, it's mostly white and just a little bit of red. The red is really, really strong. And this is a little bit different of a pink than just what comes in these bottles. This is more of a purpley pink. It's called magenta. To make like a like a bubblegum pink. You're going to use the red. And again, it's just a little tiny bit of red and mostly white. Okay. Mostly white and just a tiny bit of red. So you really don't need to put a lot of red on your palette at all if you're making pink. Just a little bit. Not even a half dollar size. So then for my fireworks, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a point in the middle. And then I'm just going to go out from that point. Sorry. It's my alarm. Go pick up my second graders. And then I'm just going out from that. So I'm just starting in the middle and just going out to make fireworks. And then I'm just going to do little lines going down. Okay, I'm going to do another one over here. And I'll do one more. Okay, and you could do actually fireworks. Uh, if you wanted to do these lines more in like a heart shape, you could do that. Okay. And then if you were doing the snow, you can go ahead and add some of the snow uh, like I did. I did it on the bottom of each of these letter U's. So you do it on the bottom of the diamonds for the snow or the top. Just pick one of the parts of the details that you want to do the snow, and you can put it on there if you want to do snow. And then the last thing you could do for this project is, I'm going to get a little bit more white, and you can do another layer on your moon. You could do another layer on anything that you want, really, as long as it's dry. You can't do another layer on something unless it's dry. If you do another layer on a wet thing, it will make a hole in your paper. So you can only add layers if the if it's dry in that area. So now you can just add layers and make it really bold and really just cover up the paper underneath. Okay. So I could go in and do another layer on these because these kind of look a little brush strokey, so I might do that off camera. Okay, that's your lesson.